uh, of the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York. Uh, we will go into executive session at the conclusion of our uh, public meetings, uh, and we do plan to reconvene uh, in public session uh, after the executive session. I would like to read the following notice uh, into the record. The meetings of the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York are open to the public, and the Board rep welcomes the interest of those who attend. The public has ample opportunity to communicate with the Board. Public hearings on the Board's policy calendar are scheduled one week prior to the Board's regular meetings, and members of the public who wish to communicate with the Board are invited to express their views at such public hearings. The Board holds additional public hearings uh, each year in, in, in all of the five boroughs at which members of the public may also speak. In addition, written communications to the Board are distributed to all trustees. <clears throat> the Board cannot carry out the functions, must carry out the functions uh, assigned to it by law and therefore cannot tolerate conduct by members of the public that disrupts its meetings. In the event of disruptions, including noise, which interferes with board discussion after appropriate warning, I will ask the security staff to remove persons uh, engaging in disruptive conduct. The university may seek disciplinary and or criminal sanctions against persons who engage in conduct that violates the university's rules or state laws, which prohibit interference with the work of public bodies. May I now request that everyone take a moment to mute your cell phone uh, or BlackBerry. <clears throat> As usual, CUNY TV uh, is transmitting the public sessions uh, of this afternoon's meeting of the board live on cable channel 75. CUNY TV is transmitting the public sessions of this afternoon uh, meeting. It's also being uh, webcast live at www.cuny.edu live stream providing world service, uh, service worldwide via personal computers and mobile devices. The public session of this uh, meeting will also be available as a podcast within 24 hours and can be accessed uh, at the CUNY website. Mind you, no noise, please. I will have to ask that you be removed by the security staff. If you make noise, then it interferes with our discussion. I would like to welcome Associate Vice Chancellor for Corporate Foundation and Major Gifts Development, Andrea Shapiro Davis. Welcome back to CUNY. Thank you. Thank you. Quiet, please. May I express our collective appreciation to Kafui Kuaku on the completion of his two years as outstanding service of outstanding service as chairperson of the University Student Senate and the student member uh, of the Board of Trustees. I would like to extend our uh, warmest congratulations uh, to the new University Student Senate Chairperson and Student Trustee, Mr. Muhammad Arshad, on his election on October 13th. Uh, Mr. Arshad is a graduate student in the Master's in Public Administration program at CCNY and he has served as a member of the board's committee on fiscal affairs. Welcome, Mohammed. Uh, interim Chancellor Kelly and I have scheduled a trustee and chancellery dinner with the newly elected uh, CUNY student leaders uh, in early December, and we look forward to meeting the new members of the USS uh, Steering Committee uh, at that dinner. Uh, the board held its operating and capital budget and public hearing on Monday, November 18th, 2013. Trustee Valerie Beal chaired the hearing 
that was also attended by trustees Charles Shorter and Mohammed Arshad and members of the Chancellery. A summary of this proceeding has been circulated to the trustees and the Chancellor's Cabinet, and a transcript is available in the office of the Secretary. I would like to thank trustees Kathleen Pasilli and Rita DiMartino for presenting, quote, moving the needle, CUNY's newest community college, gifted, named, and soaring a year after its establishment. To an, to an enthusiastic audience on October 3rd at the 44th Annual Association of Community College Trustees Leadership Congress. I want to thank trustees Valerie Beal, Frida Foster, Kath Kate Basile for their presentations at the 9th Annual CUNY New York Times J.P. Morgan Chase Women's Leadership Conference on October 25th at Hunter College under the direction of the Council of Presidents Women's Leadership Initiative Committee chaired by President Marcia Keyes and co-sponsored with the New York City Commission on Women's uh, Issues. I want to thank Trustee Wellington Chin, who has agreed to serve as chair of the search committee for a new president of Kingsborough College, Kingsborough Community College. And thank you, Trustees Frida Foster, Hugo Morales, Kate Pasilli, and Carol Robles Roman for agreeing to serve as members of this important committee. Other members of the committee are being appointed consistent with board guidelines. I also want to thank Vice Chairperson uh, Philip Berry, who has agreed to serve as Chair of the Search Committee for a new President of Queens College. Uh, and uh, thank you, Trustees Rita DiMartino, Judah Gribbets, Charles Shorter, and Jeffrey Weisenfeld for agreeing to serve as members uh, of this important committee. The other members of the committee are being appointed consistent with the board guidelines. Both search processes will, will begin uh, immediately. May I now call on Vice uh, Chairperson uh, Philip Berry to present and move a resolution. Thank you very much. Uh, it is uh, an honor for me to present uh, this resolution in appreciation of Dr. James Moiskin's service. And so I will read it uh, into the record as thus uh, because of our joy in his service and also our, our deep satisfaction for all of the things that he has done at Queens College. I'll, I'll read it and we'll continue with the uh, celebration. Uh, whereas Dr. James Moiskin was unanimously named the ninth president of Queens College in July of 2002 upon recommendation by Chancellor Matthew Goldstein and by the Board of Trustees and whereas Dr. Moiskin's previously served the City University of New York as Associate Provost and acting provost at Hunter College from 1984 to 1987, where he spearheaded a revision of the undergraduate curriculum. And whereas under Dr. Meiskin's leadership, Queens College has been ranked highly in a number of surveys for the nation's colleges and universities in the applicable areas, including second place in the new best bang for your buck rankings compiled by Washington Monthly, and was among the five colleges nationwide chosen by the Education Trust Advocacy Group for doing right by low-income students. And whereas, during his tenure at Queens College, Dr. Moiskins worked tirelessly and successfully to guide the recruitment of hundreds of new faculty oversee the completion of the renovation of Powdermaker Hall and the addition of Remsen Hall, and in 2009, welcomed students to Queens College's first ever residence hall. And whereas Dr. Moiskin was prominently involved with the opening of the CUNY Higher Education Center in Flushing and achieved a strategic alliance with Nurture New York's Nature to sponsor programs, research and classes to promote public awareness of the New York City's natural places. And whereas Dr. Moiskins recently oversaw Queens College's ambitious new strategic planning initiative that established goals for the next 20 years. And whereas Dr. Moiskins, a nationally prominent educator whose career spans over 25 years, has demonstrated his deep 
commitment to public higher education through his outstanding work in senior administrative positions at the University System of Georgia and the University of Kansas. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York expresses its heartfelt appreciation to Dr. James L. Moiskins for his exemplary dedication and distinguished leadership as president of Queens College. Thank you very much for your service. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. <laughs> Unanimously adopted. Uh, let me extend warmest congratulations on behalf of the board to Dean Michelle Anderson and to the faculty, staff, and students of the CUNY Law School for achieving an 83% pass rate uh, on the recent bar exam, higher than the statewide average of 78%. These are great results consistent with last year's record-breaking record pass rate of 83.5%. Bravo, Dean Anderson. I want to extend our deepest condolences to the family of former Congressman Major Owens, who passed away on October 21st. His prominent career in public service included heading the Community Development Agency in New York City, serving in the New York State Senate and for 24 years in the U.S. House of Representatives. Uh, Mr. Owens was a distinguished lecturer of public administration at Medgar Evers College. May I now call on Trustee Valerie Beal to announce college and faculty honors. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Several CUNY colleges were nationally recognized recently. CUNY School of Law was one of 56 recipients of Insight into Diversity Magazine's 2013 Annual Higher Education Excellence in Diversity Award. Baruch College was ranked among the top the 10 best schools in the nation for math whizzes by businessinsider.com and find the best data website and among the top 25 undergraduate programs for entrepreneurship by the Princeton Review and Entrepreneur Magazine. Both Brooklyn College and John Jay College were listed by the Chronicle of Higher Education among the top producers of U.S. Fulbright Scholars by type of institution, 2013 under Masters. Brooklyn College also ranked high among the top research institutions producing U.S. Fulbright scholars. City College was one of 11 colleges and universities nationwide cited for excellent in physics teaching, teacher preparation by the National Task Force on Teacher Education in Physics. Congratulations to them. Several City College faculty received national recognition as follows. Distinguished Professor of Biomedical and Mechanical Engineering Emeritus Sheldon Weinbaum was inducted into the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. Disting Distinguished Professor of Science and Engineering Robert R. Alfano received the American Physical Society's 2013 Arthur Charlot Prize at the APS Optical Society of America Laser Science Frontier in Optics Conference for the Super Continuum. And Professor of Biology Sally Hoskins was the 2013 recipient of the National Association of Biology Teachers Research in Biology Education. LaGuardia biology professor Thomas Onrato is partnering with Brown University on training team research and interinstitutional network for success in biomedical research careers, funded by a three-year grant from the National Institute of General Medical Sciences that will expose 10 minority students to the science. Congratulations to all. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you very much. 
May I now call on Trustee Kate Pasilli to announce student and alumni honors. Twelve graduates from Baruch College's School of Public Affairs were inducted into Gov Governor Andrew Cuomo's new Excelsior Service Fellowship Program to work with state agencies. Fifteen Baruch students participated in the MSNBC Education Nation Town Hall Program, which aired on October 6th. Congratulations to them. A team of students from City College took second place in the American Institute of Chemical Engineers, known as Chemicar, competition for their vehicle, dubbed Reeker, which runs on green battery technology developed by the CUNY Energy Institute. And the class of 2013 student, Widline Cadet, received a Mortimer Hayes Brandeis Travel Fellowship with a $19,000 supporting grant. Congratulations. LaGuardia NIH Bridges to the Baccalaureate Research Scholar, Sharice Martin, won best poster presentation in the category of neuroscience at the annual biomedical research conference for minority students, known as ABR CMS. Congratulations. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my brief report. Thank you. A list of uh, grants and gifts received by the university since our September 30th, 2013 meeting is available uh, at the table and in the trustees calendar book. May I now call on Chancellor William Kelly to present an update on recent activities. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Mr. Chair, I join you in thanking Kafui Kawaku for his extraordinary service, exemplary service as USS Chair and in welcoming Mohammed Arshad to today's meeting. I was fortunate enough to attend the USS Scholarship Dinner that was held at BMCC on October 29th, where both Kafui and Mohammed uh, held forth. It was an inspiring evening during which the USS Scholarship Program, which had been in abeyance for some time, was successfully relaunched. I want to commend Kafui on his leadership of the USS, and I look forward to working with Mohammed in the months ahead. Today, the board will consider the university's operating and capital budgets, Mr. Chair, and you will hear details about both during today's committee reports. Last week, I was pleased to give the keynote address at the universi university's 12th annual financial management conference. Thank you, Mark Shaw, Matthew Sapienza, for the invitation and for organizing a terrific event. The theme of the day was optimizing resources for student success, and in my remarks, I touched on five challenges we face in achieving that goal. First, on the federal level, the development of a higher education scorecard, a major component of President Obama's higher education plan, something that I described at the September board meeting. That process continues to move forward. As you will recall, there are four components to the initiative, one tying Pell Grant funding to college affordability, access, and outcome, two, establishing a scorecard to measure college performance, three, supporting innovative programs that reduce the cost of college with federal grants administered through the Fund for the Improvement of Post-Secondary Education, and fourth, encouraging state governments to link operational funding to college performance. Given current political realities, there is very little chance that additional funding will become available. 
but the establishment of a scorecard and the attendant pressure that will result from that action is certain. The broadly shared concern across the academic spectrum, of course, is that reliable and comprehensive data necessary to construct a meaningful scorecard do not currently exist, and that in the absence of that data, college achievement may be undervalued or misreported. The fear is that unintended consequences and perverse disincentives are likely to proliferate. Given the speed with which this initiative is moving, and it is moving like a freight train, it's critical that the university be proactive. With the help of an ad hoc committee chaired by President Ricardo Fernandez, we are working with the American Council on Education and other organizations to contribute to the structuring of the scorecard, the discussions that are currently taking place. And with the support of our Office of Institutional Research, we're developing a template that speaks to the needs of diverse public systems, which we hope will influence the ongoing national conversation. The second challenge I discuss pertains to the state. We have profited from the fiscal stability afforded by our five-year tuition plan and its attendant maintenance of effort provisions, but we bear a growing share of mandatory cost increases and confront a widening delta between tuition levels and TAP coverage. We are also mindful of the current work of a state commission chaired by Carl McCall and former Governor George Pataki, charged with identifying two to three billion dollars in tax relief. With regard to TAP, following our presentation at the September board meeting, we submitted the university's recommendations on TAP reform to the state on October 1. SUNY submitted its report last week. And although SUNY serves a very different student population, both systems face similar challenges. Most notably, both SUNY and CUNY are required to fund the difference between tuition and TAP support for fully eligible students. That provision has the capacity to absorb all of the enhanced tuition revenues the two universities will receive. As part of our ongoing efforts to address TAP reform, I met recently with Senator Kenneth Laval and Speaker Sheldon Silver and shared with them our concerns and our recommendations for productive adjustments to the TAP program. Third, on the city side, we're very much looking forward to working with Mayor-elect de Blasio and are encouraged by the prominence CUNY has played in his public statements. In building our relationship with him, however, we will need to attend carefully first to the availability of funding to support the new initiatives he's discussed, second to underscoring the university's research capacities, a critical part of our public mission, and third to supporting a productive collaboration between our city and state partners. To those ends, we are working closely with the newly elected city government leaders. Presidents Travis and Keyes are serving on the Merrill-Elect's transition team, and Presidents Matos Rodriguez and crew are working with Comptroller-Elect Scott Stringer's transition teams. We have joined with public advocate-elect Letitia James to host town hall meetings in each of the five boroughs. I would note as well that Senior Vice Chancellor Hershenson has organized a CUNY Government Relations Conference to take place on December 17th. The theme of that conference is Transitions Ahead, Maintaining Momentum. I'd also note two other events. One, a conference that distinguished Professor Mollenkopf chaired at the Graduate Center uh, to discuss the transition process. And of great interest, uh, a, a panel discussion organized by Mark Shaw and Professor Michael Jacobson with a panel of former deputy mayors held at Roosevelt House as part as an aspect of the work underway with their new CUNY Institute uh, of State and Local uh, Governments. Really important undertaking that the university has launched under their able leadership. Fourth challenge we face relates to the current labor climate. How will we recognize, reconcile, I know how to recognize them, how will we reconcile state and city agreements and how do we address our continued reliance on adjuncts currently at the 13,000 mark? As you know, Mr. Chair, our investments over the past decade have resulted in a net 23% increase in full-time faculty. That's a really remarkable number when you look across the country where the numbers have been running in exactly the opposite direction. However, unprecedented enrollment growth at our university has impeded our ability to increase the percentage of courses taught by full-time faculty. This year, we will continue our efforts by hiring 325 new faculty members. We're pulling out every stop, uh, every spare dollar to do that. And through our proposed new budget request, uh, which will be on the table today, we hope to hire 425 more. 
It's my strong belief, Mr. Chair, that nothing is, is as important to the future of this university as continuing to build a world-class faculty. Finally, I argued that the fifth challenge we face is internal. Universities, as we all know, are ancient institutions with roots in the monastic. Change does not come easy to us, uh, but higher education is in a period of rapid transformation. Doesn't really work with matins and vespers, but we soldier on. We must keep pace. The development of new revenue streams, the better use of our technological capacities, enhanced recruitment, particularly at the graduate level, a more nimble, market-sensitive process for degree development are only a few of the areas that require and are receiving attention. I do it in particular two initiatives, one under the direction of Executive Vice Chancellor Dobrin, which seeks to imagine a more technologically robust and innovative university. The second, a new effort spearheaded by distinguished professor and Arthur Schlesinger Chair of American History, David Nassau, which will develop collaborative programs among and across CUNY campuses. These efforts will include, among many other things, improving master's degree pipelines, identifying CUNY visiting professors that would move from college to college, both internally and externally chosen, and CUNY artists in residence, organizing cross-campus faculty gatherings, establishing a calculus boot camp, and other ways in which we can, at the whole, can be greater than the sum of our parts. Addressing all of these challenges will continue to be our focus during this transitional period, and we are fortunate, as you know, sir, to proceed from a position of great strength, a vibrant faculty, a strong curriculum, billions invested in new facilities, robust enrollment, a value unprecedented in higher education. I take pleasure in reminding the board that almost 60% of our full-time students pay no tuition, and 80% graduate with no debt whatsoever. More important, they graduate with a remarkable education, rich in breadth and in depth. Just a few further news and notes. Uh, as you know, Typhoon Yolanda ravaged the Philippines earlier this month. University is home to 2,100 students, at least of Filipino ancestry, as well as over 100 international students from the Philippines. I've asked Vice Chancellor Frank Sanchez to lead a university-wide effort to encourage contributions and assistance to relief efforts on behalf of those afflicted. Campus relief coordinators from the colleges met last Thursday to discuss how best to support these efforts. We will continue to work hard on that project. <laughs> Governor Cuomo officially launched the Startup New York program at a series of events last month, including one at the Sheraton New York Times uh, Hotel on October 22nd. Though Vice Chancellor, through Vice Chancellor's Iris Weinshall's great good work, we've identified five participating CUNY colleges for board action tonight, one in each borough and we await approval of the final regulations for the program. I'll travel to Albany on December 12th to participate in an education panel at Governor Cuomo's Veterans and Military Families Summits. My presentation will focus on our university's initiatives for current and prospective veteran students. I am pleased to note that the Center for an Urban Future published a report last week that listed CUNY's accelerated study and associate programs, the ASP program, ASAP program you've heard a good deal about in this, at this body, as, num uh, as, this, as number two on their list of top 10 social policy innovations in New York City in the recent years. I want to congratulate uh, Dean Mogulescu and his staff for the extraordinary good work they have done, and Scott as well. Finally, Mr. Chairman, let me note that I was delighted to launch a new Chancellor's Conversations with Faculty series this month. This series of conversations with distinguished CUNY faculty members was conceived as a way to highlight and share the scholarship of our faculty and its application to our lives and our future. The inaugural event last week at Roosevelt House Hunter College, I want to thank President Rabb for supporting the event, featured Janet Gornick, Professor of Political Science and Sociology at the Graduate Center, who also heads the Luxembourg Income Study across National Data Archive and Research Institute, and Branko Milanovic, the lead economist in the World Bank's research department who will be joining us in January. The topic of the evening was income inequality today, U.S. and global aspects. We look forward to featuring additional CUNY faculty at ongoing conversations planned for the spring. That, Mr. Chair, concludes my report. Thank you very much, uh, Chancellor Kelly. Are there comments or questions uh, for the Chancellor on his report? I enjoyed the Vespers. <laughs> you know what they are. <laughs> Thank you.
Any thank other you, comments? Preston. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we'll turn now to uh, policy items uh, requiring a vote. I would like to move the adoption of the Chancellor's University Report for November 25th, 2013. You'll find a copy of this report uh, on the table. May I have a second? Second. Are there questions or comments about the Chancellor's University uh, uh, Report for November? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Uh, the report is adopted. Uh, secondly, I would like to move the, the approval of the minutes of the regular board meeting and the executive session of September 30, 2013. You'll find a copy of the draft minutes uh, in your meeting books. May I have a second? Second. Uh, are there any comments or suggested uh, revisions of, the, of those uh, minutes? You have them in your books? Uh, if not, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Uh, the minutes are, are adopted. We'll turn now uh, to reports from uh, our various committees. Let me begin uh, with uh, Committee Chair Joe Loda present items uh, from the Committee on Fiscal Affairs. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Committee on Fiscal Affairs and the Subcommittee on Investment met in joint session on November 4th, 2013, and I want to thank Trustee Pantaleo for acting as the chair uh, at that meeting. After approval of the minutes of the Fiscal Affairs Committee meeting on September 9th, the committee following a presentation by Associate Vice Chancellor Matthew Sapienza and subsequent deliberations by the committee approved calendar item 3A, the operating budget request for fiscal year 2014 to 2015. I will now ask uh, Vice, Associate Vice Chancellor Sapienza to make that presentation to the board. Thank you, Trustee Loda, and good afternoon, everyone. At your seats, you have two documents. Uh, one is the actual budget request document, which contains all of the data and all of the details, both um, in numbers and in narrative, that comprise our budget request for fiscal 15. The other document is a PowerPoint presentation, uh, which again is at your seats and it's also up on the overhead. And that the PowerPoint pre presentation summarizes the the contents of the request, and so we'll go through the presentation um, this afternoon. Before we get into it, um, I just want to acknowledge our constituents throughout the university that helped us in crafting the request. I want to thank Trustee Arshad and also Trustee Kuwaku for their great insights as to the request and the needs that the, that the students have identified. I want to thank Trustee Martell and the University Faculty Senate the Budget Advisory Committee of the Faculty Center was immensely helpful in putting together our request. And also the Council of Presidents Fiscal Committee meeting under the leadership of President Meiskins was uh, extremely helpful as well. So I want to thank all those constituents uh, for their helpful consultations. I also want to acknowledge our Deputy Budget Director, Kathy Abada, and everyone in the University Budget Office for their terrific work in putting their request together. So let's go to the request and let's go to slide two and fiscal 15 for which we're requesting funds for represents the ninth year that we're using the CUNY compact as the main financing vehicle for the budget request and I think you're all familiar with the compact the compact offers a, a way of financing the university that leverages funds amongst the different partners within the university. And those partners are the state and city, uh, the university itself and our campuses, um, our friends through private fundraising um, in the private sector, and also our students. And so specifically what the compact asks for is for the state and city to contribute 100% of the mandatory costs plus a small share of the investment program and our request is broken down to those two major components, mandatory costs, which are the increased expenses for the uh, cost of doing business and operating our campuses. And the second major component is our investment program, which are those initiatives that, we, that are either new or expanding that are going to move the university forward and that our students are going to feel a direct benefit from. And so those would be funded through a small share from the state and city. The balance would be funded through a increased fundraising through philanthropy, 
through our own efforts to restructure our budget and find efficiencies within our budget at the campuses and at the central offices and through additional tuition revenue. So on slide four, before we get into the fiscal 15 budget request and the components of the request, I thought it'd be helpful to go through some of the history of the compact that we started in fiscal year 2007. So since 2007, we have had programmatic investments of $342 million. And let me point out, this, these are new funds that are added to our campuses. They weren't funds that went to, to plug a budget shortfall or to pay for mandatory needs. These are new funds that were added to our campus since 2007, $342 million, 229 at the senior colleges and 113 at the community colleges. And the largest component of that was $83 million that was invested in full-time faculty, 57 million at the seniors, 26 million at the community colleges. That 83 million equates to a total of 1,205 new faculty lines being added since 2007. Um, and as the chancellor mentioned earlier, this is the top um, initiative of the budget request in fiscal 15 and has been since we started the compact in 2007. Our campuses have done a tremendous job, as the chancellor mentioned in his, in his remarks, in adding additional staff, 746 at the senior colleges and 459 at the community colleges. One of the other great benefits of the compact has been financial aid. And in the, our fiscal 2015 budget request, we're setting aside $10 million for the Student Financial Assistance Initiative. And this is something that we started several years ago and has been very successful. There are a few main components as to how these funds are going to be used. One is tuition waivers for undergraduate students. And also you see that fourth bullet, um, something we started in fiscal 14, the current year we're in, is financial assistance also for graduate students. We set aside a million and a half dollars for that in fiscal 14 and that will continue in fiscal 15. We also set aside funds, a um, total of $3.2 million for the CUNY Institutional Work Study Program. And this was really critical um, in, in this year especially because federal sequestration reduced the federal work study program by 8%. We get about $9 million from the federal government for, for work study opportunities for our students at the campuses. Um, and so this $3.2 million went a long way into helping students get work opportunities at the campuses and get that work experience and additional funds to help them with the cost of their education. We also assisted students with the cost of textbooks. Mainly this was done through the purchase of textbooks at our campuses and for those textbooks to be given out on loan at the, our libraries so that students would not have to purchase them at the bookstore. And the last item was we set aside $300,000 for financial assistance for our student veterans in fiscal 14, and that'll continue in, in our fiscal 15 request. We also want to point out that students can receive the maximum Pell Award, which this year is $5,645. And the Student Financial Aid Assistance Initiative, this $10 million component of our budget request, is just a small piece of the total financial aid that's available to our students. And you can see in that last bullet point, $552 million in Pell Grants were administered to our students in the 2012-2013 academic year. Um, and that is in addition to $257 million that was given out in, in TAP awards as well. Okay, so fiscal 15 budget request and the compact investment plan. As most of you know, the Board of Trustees approved the university's master plan in June 2012 for the next five years. And we use that master plan as our, our guidepost into crafting our budget request. And there were four main missions that were included in our master plan. Mission one was expanding academic excellence. And the main components of this category are the additional full-time faculty, the, the dedication to the ongoing mission of the decade of science, and the Advanced Science Research Center, which is included in there, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes, um, and ex ex extending uh, our library system and library hours for our students. 
Mission two is maintaining an integrated system and facil facilitating articulation. These are the programs that help students acclimate to college life. Some of the key programs in here include the Accelerated Studies and Associate program, which again, we're gonna talk about in a future slide. Mission three is expanding access. These are the programs that are directly related to student services. So these include um, services for students with disabilities, veteran services, the Black Male Initiative, and the like. And mission four, the last mission, is remaining responsive to the urban setting. These are things that are really outside of the main mission of classroom instruction, but are those initiatives that are really critical to supporting this, the well-being of the state and city. You know, those, those terrific efforts that the university makes on workforce and economic development, teacher education, and sustainability efforts. So the next slide, we'll get into the numbers on slide eight, which is a summary of our request for fiscal 15. You see there are three main funding sources there, state aid, city support, and tuition. We start with our total adopted budget for the current year, which is about $3 billion. And we have the breakout of our mandatory needs and our program initiatives. We have $118 million in mandatory needs for next year, and we're requesting $111 million in additional funds for program needs, which will bring our budget up to shade under $3.2 billion for fiscal 15. The financing of those additional funds is on the next slide, slide nine. You can see there that we're asking the state and city to pick up 100% of our mandatory needs and for a small portion of the programmatic initiatives, we're asking for about $18 million from the state for program initiatives and $8.3 million from the city uh, for the community colleges. The next two lines, the community college state aid increase, I wanna spend a couple of minutes on. Our request includes the addition of, two, of a base aid increase to community colleges from the state of New York. We're requesting an increase of $250 per FTE. The state provides funds as per state statute per FTE to all community college students throughout the state of New York. The current rate for fiscal 14 is $2,422 per FTE. And we've been fortunate that we've had increases of the last two years of $150 per year for the last two state fiscal years. However, the, the rate that we currently have, $2,422, is much lower than where we were in fiscal 2009 when the recession hit. Um, in 2009, the base aid per FTE was $2,675 per FTE. And so what we're asking for in our fiscal 15 request is to get us back to where we were in 2009. Um, and so that's why we're, in, we're asking for the $250 base aid increase, which would generate $19.5 million for our community colleges. We're also estimating an addition of $75 million in tuition revenue for fiscal 15. And those last two components are those internal components of the compact that I mentioned earlier. Restructuring, we're committed to finding $7.5 million in efficiencies within our budget to reprogram for the compact initiatives and also um, identify an additional $10 million in private fundraising in fiscal 15 that would be used for those programmatic needs. Okay, so what are those programmatic needs that, that we talked about earlier? Well, here's a, some highlights on slide 10 of our investment program, which totals almost $129 million. As I said earlier, the largest component would go towards Mission One, $79.5 million. And by far the largest component of the entire compact is the additional full-time faculty. As the Chancellor mentioned earlier in his remarks, we're setting aside $53 million in our request for the addition of 425 new full-time faculty lines at our campuses. We're also requesting $15.4 million for the Advanced Science Research Center. The Advanced Science Research Center is gonna be opening up this summer in August 2014. It's a very exciting new initiative. Um, the building is gonna be spectacular and state of the art. The state has provided funds in the capital budget to build the building. 
we've identified funds to, to purchase the high-end equipment that's going to be needed for that building. However, there are still costs that have to be covered, and those are the operating costs of the building, not only to recruit high-end faculty to teach in the building, but those critical positions that are necessary so that faculty and students can do the good work that is needed. Positions like safety officers, like maintenance and operations, um, stationary engineers, those folks are needed in order to make sure that the building operates to full capacity and that the building is safe for students and faculty to work in. And so we're requesting from the state $15.4 million in operating costs to fund the Advanced Science Research Center. Mission two, um, we're asking for six and a half million dollars, and those are basically coming from two main components. $2.6 million to expand the ASAP program at our community colleges. We're committed to expanding to 4,000 students in fall of 2014. It's been a really successful program under the leadership of Executive Vice Chancellor Logan and, and Senior University Dean Mogulescu. We're also asking for $3.9 million for Gutman Community College. These are additional funds so that the college could expand. The college opened uh, with a cohort, for initial cohort of about 275 students. They have added about 300 students, a little less this year. Um, but we want to keep expanding the, the college. Um, they're doing great work so far, and so we're asking for $3.9 million for Gutman. And Mission 3, um, expanding access, we're asking for $27.8 million. $2 million for veteran services. We have about 4,000 student veterans at the university, and it, they, all, they need the support not only to help them with their college career, but also in, in getting back into society. Um, $2.5 million to explain the Black Male Initiative. And I wanted to spend a minute on this, because this is another component of what we're asking the state to fund as part of their programmatic initiatives. The Black Male Initiative has been solely funded by the City of New York for the last nine years by the City Council. Um, this year we have two and a half million dollars that's funded in the budget for fiscal 14. And we're asking the state to now pick up, to match the city's appropriation of two and a half million dollars so that we can expand that program as well. Lastly, in that initiative, we're asking for two million dollars for students with disabilities specifically for the CUNY Leads program, a program that provides academic and vocational services for our students with disabilities, and a program that has been extremely successful for us for the last several years. Lastly, the remaining responsive to the urban setting mission, we're asking for $15 million. And the item I want to highlight there is the CUNY Service Corps, where we're requesting $4 million. The CUNY Service Corps was rolled out this year in, in the fall 2013 semester. At seven of our campuses, there's 750 students participating in this initial cohort. It's providing jobs to our students with a, vari with a variety of community-based organizations. So not only are students getting great experience and <coughs> supplemental financial assistance um, to help fund their um, college career, but it's also providing a terrific benefit to the city of New York through these community-based organizations. Okay, the next slide summarizes those numbers by senior and community college and by our four main missions within our master plan. So you can see the breakout there, about $247 million request. On slide 12, I want to spend a few minutes talking about our mandatory needs because, again, this is a large component of our request, $118 million. The largest component of the mandatory needs has historically been and continues to be fringe benefits. Fringe benefits has been growing at a clip for the last several years of about 10 to 11 percent uh, over the last several years. And the largest drivers of those growth uh, is increased health insurance costs and also growing pension liabilities. And this we've seen throughout the country at local governments, and certainly CUNY is, is no different when it comes to trying to, to contain those growing costs. And so fringe benefits total $78.6 million. Additional energy cost totals only $2 million, and I say only $2 million because I want to um, give credit to our, co our college presidents. The colleges have done a tremendous job the last couple of years in, in becoming more aware of what their energy costs are and trying to contain them. 
And so next year, we're projecting that it will grow by only $2 million. We also have $1.4 million for growing uh, building rental costs for escalations for our current rental agreements. And we have new building rentals. Uh, we're estimating to be $4.3 million for next year. The majority of that, and you can see it's all at our senior colleges, is for our new cinema school for Brooklyn College at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Contractual salary increments are those step increments that are built into our contract with the faculty union, and that totals $23.6 million. And then we have inflation on our purchasing budget, our OTPS budget, of $8.2 million. Okay, so next steps. Well, we're hoping that um, at tonight's meeting that the board will consider our request and, and approve it. Um, once it is approved by the board, we will share it with elected officials, um, and particularly the State Division of Budget and the City Office of Management and Budget. We've already had discussions about some of our mandatory needs and other key components of our budget request for fiscal 15. Um, it's very critical that we get it into the hands of the elected officials as soon as possible because the governor will be issuing his executive budget for fiscal 15 in January. Um, the state is projecting a deficit of about $1.7 billion for next year, which I know sounds like a lot of money to the rest of us, but in, in context of the state budget is actually a very small amount of money. And the governor and the state legislature not only have been able to pass on-time budgets for the past several years, but they've really brought that number down significantly. A few years ago, we were talking about $15 billion deficits at the state level. So to only have a $1.7 billion deficit for next year is encouraging. It's also important for us to get it into the hands of the folks in the city because in January, the mayor will also be presenting the city's 2015 preliminary budget. Uh, mayor Bloomberg just announced on Friday that the city's financial plan for fiscal 15 is now balanced, and so he's handing Mayor-elect de Blasio a balanced budget for fiscal 15, so that's very welcome and encouraging news for next year. So that's our request for 15, and Trustee Loda, that concludes my report. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and adoption of calendar item 3A. I'll second that motion. Um, are there questions for the committee on the operating budget request? Yes. Uh, I, this is awfully simplistic, and it's really a matter of clarification. On slide 10, which is the real guts of the budget, uh, there is an investment program that totals $128 million. Mm -hmm. Is that 128 represent the uh, net increases from tuitions from our compact? Is that one of the unique aspects of the compact? Tuition is one of the components that would fund the $128 million. The other components would be, and I'll bring everyone to that slide, which is on slide nine, would be state and city support for both, for the programmatic initiatives. In addition, the $250 base aid increase for, that we're asking for the state for the community colleges would also go to fund a portion of the programmatic initiatives. And in addition, the, the, the two main internal sources of funds that we have in the university, the private fundraising of $10 million, right. and also the efficiencies that we're committed to fund in our budget, they, the, all those components would fund our programmatic initiatives. Uh, no, I just, I couldn't reconcile the 128 with the 247. That's why I asked the question. What's the, what is the difference there? The, the 128 represents the programmatic initiatives. The other piece, the mandatory needs of 118, when you add that to the 128, that would give you the total of 247. So that, okay, so that separates out the mandatory needs. Correct. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Martel. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, acknowledge the outstanding way this budget is put together. I very much appreciate your, you and your team's willingness to uh, consult all uh, of the stakeholders, and as UFS chair, I acknowledge and appreciate that. I do have a question. Is there any money in this uh, to execute the recommendations uh, that flowed from the Mercer report for the uh, executive compensation plan, a plan that this Board of Trustees, I believe, approved. 
It's not included in the request for next year, no. Well, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would, I would like to at least raise that issue. I understand it's late in the game, but I think this is a serious issue. Board set compensation policy. Uh, and I believe the Mercer report showed that uh, our ECP, our executive compensation plan participants, salaries are low compared to peer groups. That is not healthy and it's not appropriate. As I say, I serve on several boards, board set compensation policy. We made a decision to expand the range of appropriate salaries. There should be money in this budget to execute that policy. Uh, participants in the executive compensation plan should not be held hostage to exogenous negotiations over which they have no control nor no standing. Uh, people should leave CUNY for increased opportunity, not merely for increased salaries. We have many excellent administrators. They should be paid appropriately. And I hope uh, the board would give this issue some very serious consideration because I believe it is a serious issue. Thank you. Uh, I think the committee will, will, will be uh, giving that consideration, as you suggested. Thank you. Other comments? Mr. Peter? I, I appreciate uh, the chairman stating that the committee will give it some consideration, and I'm sure it will. I just, uh, first of all, want to identify with and, and agree with the remarks of Professor Mar uh, Martell and also acknowledge that I, I believe those remarks come from a very significant source on this, on this subject, and that is elected faculty representatives. So to the extent that there is inhibition about uh, taking appropriate steps to deal with the, I think it's becoming almost scandalous, the fact that the administration of this university is working without pay increases for as long as they have worked without them. Uh, I just uh, wanted to add my two cents to that and thank uh, Professor Martel for his comment. Okay. Other comments? I, I, um, I, I really just want to add to that. I mean, ha looking at man, having been involved a lot in compensation plans and understanding that it, and individuals really need to, we need to be competitive. And, and so to the extent that we're not competitive, then that's really something that, that we need to look at uh, because uh, it can, it, it, there is a, a correlation to quality, you know, and if we got to a point where our quality would suffer, where we would even have to raise questions about that, that's not a good place to be in. So I just want to underscore, uh, you know, the last two comments. All right, thank you very much. Other comments? Are you uh, ready for the question? Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Motion uh, is adopted. The calendar item 3B is a resolution authorize the city university to adopt a revised schedule of tuition charges in the form of a tuition differential for the Masters of Professional Studies in Branding and Integrated Communications at the City College of New York for first-time students effective with the spring 2014 semester. The proposed tuition increase of $1,800 per semester for full-time and $365 per credit for part-time resident students and $205 per credit for full and part-time non-resident students is necessary to strengthen the services to students and improve the quality, the general quality, of the master's program uh, in branding and integrated communications at City College. The college will continue to provide financial aid uh, funding to assist eligible New York State residents to afford the increase in tuition. The only master's uh, in branding and integrated communication programs at the university is the one at uh, City College. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and adoption of calendar item 3B. I'll second the motion. Are there questions for the committee on item 3B? Mohammed? Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> I am. Um, I just wanted to address the access and quality portion of it. I, I believe the $1,800 um, increase in tuition fee is a bit much for the students um, because um, it, it will make uh, this be, um, the most expensive master's degree program at CCNY by $1,015 uh, more than architecture and um, $1,115 by MPA. 
and we just saw that uh, Associate Vice Chancellor Sapienza just presented, we do have, uh, because the explanation part of item 3B outlines the increased career, career services and um, prof uh, professors, uh, the compact budget uh, mission one and three, it just sums up $107.3 million for the same initiatives. So I believe uh, putting this burden um, on the students, it's a bit much for the students, uh, $1,800. And in the explanation, it says it's necessary, which um, I don't agree. I think there are other alternatives that we can explore to actually provide the similar services. We have at CCNY, the Career Services uh, Center is being expanded, so we do have opportunity over there to provide the similar services to students. Mm -hmm. And we are hiring more faculty every semester to provide the similar services. And so. And any response to that? Uh, sure. Um, <clears throat> you know, Trustee Arsha, I definitely hear you, and, and I understand your concerns about it. Um, this program is a, is a new program at City College, the, the Master's in Branding and Integrated Communication. And unfortunately, it's an, ex, it's an expensive program as well. And anytime we've done differential tuition at any of our master's programs, we've always committed that the dollars from those programs would go back into that program, that they wouldn't be used for other needs at the campuses, that they would be invested in that program. And that's what the commitment that we have from President Koiko for this program as well. Um, there's only about 30 students in this program, um, just started this fall. Um, there have been consultations with those students to let them know that this is happening. The, the current students that are there will be grandfathered in at the, at the current tuition rates. Um, and there won't be a no, another new cohort of students until next fall. Um, even though these will be effective in spring, there won't be another new cohort of students in this program that won't start until fall. Um, so we do have some time to um, do additional consultations and to have discussions with University Student Senate if you feel that's necessary. But unfortunately, this is a very expensive program, and we don't want to divert resources from other areas of the campus to, to uh, resource this program. Um, and so that's why the additional tuition, um, this differential tuition is needed for this specific program. Are there other comments? Questions for the committee on the budget, uh, on the um, motion? If not, are you ready for the question? Yes. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yes. One, opposite, one opposed, any abstentions? No abstentions. The motion is adopted. Uh, Mr. Chairman, following the approval of action items 3A and 3B, the subcommittee on investment was convened after approval of the minutes of the, its uh, subcommittee meeting on September 9th, the committee was adjourned and went into executive session where Cambridge Associates gave a performance uh, update of the university's investment portfolio. No action was taken. Mr. Chairman, this concludes my report. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll turn next to the Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration. May I call on uh, Committee Chair Valerie uh, Beal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I now present for the board's approval the items that the board committee for faculty, staff, and administration considered at its meeting on November 4, 2013. I'd like to thank Trustee DiMartini Martino for chairing the meeting in my absence. I will begin with calendar item 4A, which amends the university's intellectual property policy. The major substantive change is to eliminate a faculty committee that was intended to assist in decision making with respect to which faculty inventions should be commercialized. Instead, decisions concerning marketing and commercialization will be made by a central university technology commercialization office established by the vice chancellor for research. The existing committee members were polled by the University Faculty Senate and have agreed to this change, which reflect current practice at many other universities. The campuses will be able to continue to participate in the process by designating a liaison to work with the Technology Commercialization Office. Mr. Chair, at this time, I'd like to recognize our general counsel. Thank you. 
Um, as you know, it's the hallmark of the General Counsel's Office to consult widely and attentively with uh, affected constituencies on board policies. In this case, however, we appear to have overlooked our colleagues at the Research Foundation. And this morning, uh, I got a communication from our friend Richard Rothbart, the president of the Research Foundation, concerning a few concerns that they had with these amendments. So his counsel and I worked uh, uh, on this today. And as a result, you have before you uh, on the table uh, a very slightly revised uh, version of the intellectual property policy amendments. Um, there, there are only two substantive ones uh, apart from one typo. Uh, they appear first on page three, uh, where uh, you, you'll see it in the yellow highlighting, uh, highlighted area, uh, where we acknowledge, as we should have, uh, that contracts in the area of intellectual property are uh, sometimes approved as to form uh, by my office, but sometimes by the Research Foundation. And so we expanded the language to include uh, that uh, all such contracts would be on forms approved either uh, by the Office of the General Counsel or by the Research Foundation. And then the only other substantive change uh, is on page 12 in the definition of members of the university. Uh, we had put in some new language uh, indicating uh, that uh, members of the university would include all researchers on grants, whether or not approved by the Research Foundation. But of course, in theory, all grants uh, must be uh, <coughs> administered by the Research Foundation. And uh, 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 Richard and his uh, very distinguished counsel thought that that language might encourage people to think uh, otherwise. And so we went back to the original language, uh, which is, uh, any grant funds made available uh, to the university by or through the Research Foundation and took out the words whether or not. Uh, those were the two substantive changes and uh, I would ask you to consider the policy with those amendments which uh, obviously were not before the committee when they approved it. All right, are there other questions for the committee or the general counsel on the uh uh, on the amendments to the intellectual property policy you have before you at the table. Um. Mr. Chair, um, I present these items with the amendments from um, general counsel for the board's consideration. Thank you, and I'll second that uh, motion. Are you ready for the question? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Items 4B through 4K pertain to a series of naming opportunities at the Leonard and Claire Tao Center for Performing Arts at Brooklyn College. The aggregate value of the gifts associated with these namings, namings is more than $6,696,000. The Board Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration has reviewed these items and is pleased to recommend their approval. Mr. Chair, I present items 4B through 4K for the board's approval. Second those. Are there questions for the committee on any of these uh, naming items? Not all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Those uh, items carry. Items 4L through 4 O are naming additional naming opportunities at several of our colleges which I also will present as a group. The monetary gifts associated with these matters total more than $1,550,000. The Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration has reviewed them and recommends their approval. They are as follows. The Albert Bildner Conference Room at the Graduate Center, the Dr. Karen C. and Dr. Louis J. Alfest Office of Career Planning and Professional Development at the Graduate Center, the Donald Brownstein at, and John McDermott Honors Scholarships in the Humanities at Queens College, and the BIJ STEM Physics Laboratory at LaGuardia Community College. Mr. Chair, I present items 4L, 4M, 4N, and 4O for the board's approval. Second that uh, motion. Uh, are there questions for the committee on any of these items? Uh, if not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Those items carry. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. That concludes my report. Thank you very much. We'll turn next to the Committee on Academic uh, Policy Programs and Research. May I call on, on Committee Chair Wellington Chen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this November 4th, 2013 meeting, the committee approved the following policy matters. Calendar number item 5A, Brooklyn College, Master of Fine Arts in Cinema Arts, Master of Arts in Cinema Studies, and the establishment of a camp uh, branch campus. The MFA in Cinema Arts is a professional degree focusing on various aspects of commercial film and television production. The MA in Cinema Studies focuses on the theoretical and historical aspects of film studies. A resolution for a branch campus is also put forth because these programs are scheduled to be offered at the Steiner Studio in Brooklyn Navy Yard. The Steiner Studios are the largest production studio facilities outside of Hollywood. The college has been raising private funds to support these programs and facilities, and earlier this year received a commitment of $5.5 million from a graduate of the college. Calendar number 5B, City College Sophie Davis School of Biomedical Education. Establishment of a Department of Medical Education. The creation of this academic department supports the efforts of City College to offer complete medical education on this campus. The department will provide an academic home for affiliated physicians and five current full-time faculty members who will teach much of the curriculum of the proposed BSMD program. This proposed program is also the basis of calendar item number 5C. Calendar number item 5C, City College Sophie Davis School of Myomedical Education, letter of intent to establish a combined Bachelor of Science, Doctor of Medicine degree. City College currently offers a BS in Biomedical Science, which is combined with the first two years of medical school training. City College has partnerships with six area medical schools, which admit graduates of this combined program into their MD programs with advanced standing. The current proposal will allow City College through the Sophie Davis School to offer the full MD curriculum and to award the medical degree itself. The letter of intent is being brought here today to provide City College with the board appro approval needed to work with the medical school accreditors on creating this program, as well as with the D New York State Department of Education on the master plan amendment that will be required in order for CUNY to offer a full MD degree. Calendar number 5D, John Jay College, Bachelor of Arts in Anthropology. John Jay College proposes proposes a BA in Anthropology as part of its strategic plan to offer its students a wider array of liberal arts majors with a social justice emphasis. Mm -hmm. The college has a sufficient number of full-time faculty to offer this program and therefore costs are expected to be minimal. Calendar number 5E, Kingsborough Community College, Associates of Applying Science in Polysomnographic graphic technology. New York State has a recently established licensing criteria for polysomnographic graphic technologists, individuals who work in sleep study centers as part of team diagnosing a, vari a variety of sleep disorders. This program will fulfill the academic requirements for that license. The program advances Kingsborough's strategic plan to become a center for allied health degree programs. Calendar number 5F, Lehman College, establishment of the School Health Sciences, Human Services, and Nursing. Four existing academic departments will come together to form the School of Health Sciences, Human Services, and Nursing. The union of these four departments into a single academic enterprise will provide Lehman with increased visibility in the health science and human services arena and will generate more opportunities for external funding from government agencies and private sources. School of Professional Studies at the Graduate School and University Center, Bachelor of Science in Information S Systems. The degree completion program will be delivered totally online, offering more students the ability to complete an undergraduate degree in the information systems, a field in which there continues to be a demand for technically educated and trained professionals. Calendar number 5H, College of Staten Island, Bachelor of Arts in Geography. 
This proposed program exposes students both to traditional geography coursework and also to geographic information systems. Mapping software thus is used in a variety of professions. Career opportunities in the field of geography, particularly for individuals with formal exposure to geographic information systems, are expected to increase at a rate faster than average for all professions. Calendar number five, five I. The City University of New York cha changes change in the university student retention and progress policy. This proposed change to CUNY policy will permit us to comply with federal regulations that now require a student on academic probation to have an academic plan that will, if followed, bring the student into a good academic standing. Calendar number 5J, Baruch College, agreement with the College of management academic studies in Israel to offer a dual master's degree in international business management. Baruch College seeks a, to offer a dual international master's of business administration program with the College of Management Academic Studies in Israel. This program would be an international extension of the successful master's of business administration offered locally by Baruch. Added item, calendar number 5K, resolution to award an honorary degree at Hunter College. This item was submitted to the Office of Academic Affairs after the date of the CAPRA meeting and, and so distributed to members of the Board of Trustees for their review and comments. At its winter commencement, at its winter's commencement ceremony on January 23, 2014, Hunter seek to award the Doctor of Humane Letters to Harlan Carter the Pulitzer Prize winning journalist and co-chief art critic and senior writer at the New York Times. Prior to becoming a staff at the art critic at New York Times, Mr. Carter worked in CUNY's University Budget Office from 1981 to 1997. Item number 5A through 5J were approved by the committee and I recommend the approval by the board in addition to item 5K, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I'll second uh, the motion on all those items. Are there uh, questions for the committee on, on any of these items, new programs, uh, the agreement with Israel, and the honorary degree? I'll, all right, then, um, yes. I, I just had uh, one question about the medical school, um, and um, I, I know very little and know absolutely nothing about that. But are, do those programs break even, or are they, will they be an additional drain on the resources of the school, or how is it envisioned um, that a med medical school would work? I, I would assume it's a very expensive proposition to run a medical school. Uh, uh, Lisa, can you respond to that? Thank you. I don't know if you want me to answer Thank you. Um, I don't. I don't see, can you hear, oh, now yep. you can hear me. Now can now. It's like my voice is so loud. Um, uh, yes, we've actually been working on business models. This is the LOI, is the letter of intent to explore this. Um, the Where the, a lot of the costs happen um, is in the owning and operating of hospitals. And this program, which is a primary care program based predominantly in a longitudinal outpatient setting, we have no intention of having any ownership of hospitals running clinical practice plans. What we're looking at is tuition models and other models, and we've been working with finance so that it should not drain on So the I assume resources. they'll come back to the board. Oh, ev everything. This is just the letter of intent so that we can explore and take the next step. Yeah, Thank you. All, the, the full plan will come back to the board and, and go through the usual process of committee consideration. Thank you. Oh. Um, are there any other comments or questions? Uh, if not, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? Thank you. Any abstentions? All, those uh, items all carry. Thank you. Uh, information items. Dr. Lowe informed the committee of a new academic center being established at City College, the Documentary Forum, the Center for Film Journalism and Interactive Media, which will focus on nonfiction and visual storytelling and will engage the local arts community. She then gave the, the committee updates on three items. First, the central office has streamlined the procedures that colleges, the colleges must follow to propose new programs. The central office no, has now eliminated 
the letter of intent for new degree programs proposal. This will allow CUNY to respond to the marketplace more quickly with new programs while still maintaining a rigorous review process. Second, <coughs> Dr. Lowe pointed out that to, the two items in particular on the CAPRA agenda, the addition of graduate studies in filmmaking at, at Brooklyn College and the introduction of medical education at City College show how CUNY continues to expand its, extend its reach in educating the residents of New York City while drawing from the rich resources that the city has to offer. Third, Dr. Lowe gave an overview of new trends in higher education. She stressed while some of these trends may not sustain themselves, some including online education, have established themselves as, a, as new paradigms. CUNY has lagged other universities, both public and private, including SUNY, in the creation and delivery of online courses and programs. She, encourages, she encouraged the members of CAPA to look seriously at any forward-thinking changes that may well serve the long-term interests of CUNY. That concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you very much. We'll turn next to the uh, uh, Committee on Facilities Management uh, and Planning, Facilities Planning and Management. Uh, I'd like to call on Committee Chair uh, Frida Foster. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> the Board of Trustees Committee on Facilities Planning and Management considered four items at its meeting of November 4th, 2013, and I'd like to thank Trustee Jeff Weisenfeld for chairing the meeting in my absence. The first action item, Hunter College, construction funding for design and construction management of renovation of sixth and seventh floors of Wexler Library. This item is to authorize the City University Construction Fund to accept design and construction <coughs> management pre-construction funding from the Hunter College Foundation Incorporated of the funds necessary to cover the costs of the design and construction management services for the renovation of the sixth and seventh floors of Hunter's Wexler Library. The Hunter College Foundation promotes the educational and charitable pur pur purposes of the college, including raising funds for improvements to college facilities. This resolution will allow the use of Hunter College Foundation grants to pay for construction and related services for the renovation of the sixth and seventh floors of the Wexler Library. The renovations will result in a more suitable environment for the 21st century learning. Item B, City College of New York construction funding for renovation of the City College Alumni House for the Colin Powell Center. This item is to authorize the City University Construction Fund to accept construction funding from the City College 21st Century Foundation of all of the funds necessary to cover the costs associated with the construction and related services for the renovation of the City College Alumni House in order to accommodate the Colin Powell Center. The City College 21st Century Foundation is organized to promote the charitable purposes of the college, including raising funds for improvement to college facilities. The re this resolution will approve the use of foundation funding to reconstruct the Alumni House at 280 Convent Avenue for use by the Colin Powell Center for Leadership and Service. Item C, Hunter College amended resolution authorizing two contracts for the renovation and equipment fit out of the Broadcast Media Center at 695 Park Avenue. To, this item is to amend the resolution adopted at the meeting of February 25, 2013 to authorize an increase in the estimated total project cost. The first contract is to upgrade the existing TV studio lighting and HVAC system, and the second contract is for the teleproduction fit out for a high definition production and teaching space. This resolution is an amendment to the, re to the resolution adopted at the February 2013 board meeting. At that time, the contract for renovation was estimated at $437,000 and equipment integration at $692,000. Increased construction costs experienced over the last year will mean that bids that are due to be received this month are expected to increase by approximately 3% over the original budget amount. Item D, the City University of New York capital budget. This, res this resolution is to approve the five-year capital budget request for fiscal year 2014 to 2015 through fiscal year 2018-2019 on behalf of the City University of New York. I'll now turn it over to Vice Chancellor Weinshell for her brief, brief presentation to the board. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would call uh, to the board's attention and those here the um, handout in front of them entitled the 2014-2015 uh, capital budget request. 
Um, if you turn to the uh, first page, I just want to point out that every year, CUNY completes a five-year request that represents a consistent message of need for the university. The process allows CUNY to track and plan details of our program. We review hundreds of projects. Some are phased, some are partially funded. My staff meets with every college to discuss these projects. All of the presidents have reviewed their campuses' sections and have signed off. This request covers state fiscal year 2014-2015 through 2018-2019 and city fiscal year 2015. On slide two, the majority of the request is for state bonded funding for the following priorities. New buildings, major renovations and building updates including critical maintenance projects, new scientific computer and other facility equipment purchases. On slide three, we talk about the request breakdown. The five-year state city request totals $6.7 billion. The senior college portion is $5.3 billion. The community college portion is $1.4 billion. The state share is $6 billion, and the city's portion is $725 million. We're requesting approximately $100 million in city Reso A funding. This request little, literally represents hundreds of projects. On the next slide, um, we talk about our priorities. The request is prioritized per Board of Trustees approved goals, some of which are listed here. First and foremost, state of good repair. Second, the completing of ongoing partially funded projects, such as the renovation of the Lawrence and Errol Field Building at Baruch College, your college's academic village and conference center. Number three, continue to request funds for the Chancellor's initiatives, such as the Decade of the Sciences, upgrade to technologies across the university, and lastly, the request of the continuation of the CUNY 2020 program. I would call your attention to the, uh, the next slide, which is the progress of the state of good repair effort, which has been going on in this university for the last five years. Since the inception of the critical maintenance program in 2008-2009, we have invested over $833 million to upgrade our facilities. And I'd like to point out the largest category is facility upgrades, next followed by the building envelope category. These aren't sexy projects, but they keep our buildings open, and we do all that, it, that we can to make sure that our students and faculty can do their best work in the best facilities. Next, um, regarding the capital request, I also want to give you a brief status of CUNY's existing funding for the capital programs. We still have approximately $3.6 billion available to spend, most of this in state funding. We have funds to progress current projects which are under construction. However, as always, we need new funds to start new projects because capital projects require long range planning and funding. And lastly, on the back page, here are some of the renderings of major new buildings in the request. The York College's new academic village and conference center, Hunter Science and Health Professions building, the College of Staten Island's new performance and high performance and computational center, and lastly, Brooklyn College's new Roosevelt Hall Science Building. Thank you. Thank you. Um, in addition, the following resolution came in too late for prior review at the Board of Trustees Committee on Facilities Planning and Management meeting uh, in November. Therefore, it is being brought before the Board of Trustees for consideration. Item E is the City University of New York designation of campuses for Startup New York program. This resolution is to designate five CUNY campuses, City College, Mega Evers, York College, Bronx Community College, and the College of Staten Island to participate in the Startup New York program, making them eligible to host tax-free zones on campus. These zones will be generally exempt from New York State taxes for a period of 10 years. In order to be eligible, these campuses, one in each borough, must be located in an economically distressed community. Businesses seeking to be hosted by a CUNY campus must either be in the formative stage of development or be a high-tech business 
must create new jobs, must not compete with existing businesses within the immediate community, must further the academic mission of the host campus and provide economic benefits such as employment or training. I hereby request your approval of these calendar items. I'll second those items. Are there questions for the committee on any of these items? Uh, seeing none, uh, are, are you ready for the question? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? Any abstentions? Those items are carried. Thank you. Uh, th thank you very much. Uh, that concludes our public business for this meeting. Uh, we will now adjourn and go into executive session. Uh, we, we do plan to reconvene in public session uh, after the end of the executive session. Interim Executive Vice Chancellor and University Provost, effective January 2nd, 2014, at a compensation to be recommended by the Chancellor uh, to the Board, subject to financial ability. Uh, we need to do this because um, uh, University Provost Lexa Logue will be on study leave starting on January 2nd, 2014. Uh, Dr. Wrigley currently serves as Associate University Provost, a position she's held since 2010. Prior to coming to the Central Office, Dr. Wrigley served as Acting Provost, Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs, and, <coughs> and uh, Acting Associate Provost and Dean uh, at the Graduate Center, where she's a tenured member of the PhD program in Sociology. She earned a BA in Sociology from the University of Michigan and an MS and PhD both in Sociology from the University of Wisconsin, uh, Madison. Mm -hmm. May I have a second? Second. Echo. Are there any comments or um, questions about this? If not, all uh, those in favor of the appointment, please say yes. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Uh, welcome, Dr. Wrigley. and honored that the board has approved my appointment. It will be a great privilege to work with Interim Chancellor Bill Kelly to advance CUNY's mission of educating all the people of New York. This great university creates opportunities for its students Thanks. and helps them realize their dreams while enriching the life of the city in innumerable other ways. As I prepare for this new role, I thank you for your confidence. I would also like to thank Executive Vice Chancellor Lexa Logue for her support and leadership. Thank you very much. Uh, that concludes the business of uh, this public session. I adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Thank you.